In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an edible image number cake topper. Hi, it's Carolyn. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cakes since 2002. And on this channel, I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. So disclaimer, first of all, my neighbors decided to mow their lawn right now. So I'm sorry if you hear that in the background. And also, I literally, I don't have time to do my face today. I have bags under my eyes. I look a little tired because I'm really busy right now. But I wanted to get this video out for you guys. So what I'm doing in this video, I want to show you how you can cut out edible images and make a number topper for your cake. You're going to want to have an edible printer system. I got mine from Icing Images. I can link that below and also link below videos on how I work with edible images and everything like that. I'll just link everything below. And also, I just want to remind you before we get started, I designed my first free guide for you guys. It's a birthday cake design blueprint. It'll help you come up with ideas to design your birthday cakes and I will link that in the description below. So let's get into the video. So right now I want to find the number one that I want to use. So I went to Google and I typed in a Google number one, and all of these ones come up when I click on images. And you could just pick whatever one that you want. Um, I like this red one here, so I'm gonna click on it. Right click, save image, just name it and save it. And then you wanna find the image that you want to use that you wanna print out, okay? So I'm doing, why is that okay? <laughs> I'm doing a TikTok cake. So I went to Google and I typed in TikTok wallpaper and clicked on images and all these images came up. Now there are some images that you can't use that have watermarks in them. So just make sure you're not using anything with a watermark. Um, but I found this one here and I, um, you just have to search. You know, like you just have to look through. Uh, I don't want any purple in it, so I don't want to use this one. Uh, that one's backwards, I'm not gonna use that. You know, you, so you just kind of have to look, um, no matter what theme that you're doing, just find a picture that you want to use. And again, I have this repeated TikTok pattern. I'm gonna right click and save image as, and I'm gonna save it in my cake design folder again and just name it TikTok pattern. All right. Now I have a PC. I do not have a Mac. I'm not sure how this works. If you have a Mac, I can only teach you how to do it with a PC. So I use Microsoft Word. So I'm going to open up a blank document and I'm going to insert both of those pictures that I just saved. And also the TikTok logo. All right, now a few things. She's turning 11, so I'm, I'm just gonna trace, I need two number ones of the same size. So what I wanna do first, there's rulers up here and rulers down the side, so you can tell how big your number and your pattern are gonna be. This topper is gonna go on top of a four inch tier. So I can't have the numbers be really gigantic because they're not gonna fit. So I need to make sure that the 11, I'm gonna print another one of these, is gonna be less than four inches wide. So I want to just right click and crop this and I want to try to get just the number and none of the background. And now I just want to make this a little bigger so I'm just gonna drag it down and use the rulers as a guide on the sides. I usually like my toppers to be about four inches tall and I'm just gonna right click, click copy, and then right click and put paste. All right, I don't know why these are showing a little off center, but whatever, they're the right height, they're the same size, there's just one higher and one lower, whatever. So these are just about four inches wide, this is perfect. Now, for the TikTok logo, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna print it out a little wider than four inches. So I can make this actually a little smaller. And again, you just wanna make sure that you have the correct size. So this 11 here 
will be able to fit on top of here. I'm gonna print this out on regular paper and I'm gonna print this out on edible image paper. So I'm just gonna print this to start. So I'm gonna to go to file, print, and then I'm gonna send it to my regular printer and just print the first page. Now what's good about this is that these papers on here, it's the same size as a regular sheet of paper. So what I could do is just put this on top and see that this square is big enough it's going to be able to, uh, it's big enough that I can cut these two ones out of it. Now I'm ready to print. So I'm going to hit file, print, and then send this to my Canon, my edible image printer. So here's my edible printer. I have this tray pulled out and I'm going to load the paper in with this little clear strip facing down. And I'm going to print. And that's perfect. Now you can see that the print is really shiny right now. I'm going to set this aside for about five to 10 minutes so the ink can dry and then we will cut it out. All right, now the ink on here is dry. So I just have a pair of scissors and I'm going to peel it back from the acetate paper here, only peeling back the picture. I'm not peeling the whole thing off because I'm going to save the rest of the sheet and I can use it for other pictures. I can link below how I, how I um, get the most out of my edible printer sheets. So I'm just cutting right around the image and trying to keep the rest of the paper intact. Now I save these silver envelopes that this paper comes in. That way you can store any leftover paper in here and it won't dry out. Always make sure you seal it so the paper won't dry out. Now I have this 11 here and you can see that the 11 will fit on top of here perfectly. Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna put Tic Tac colors or pink and blue. It's actually like a reddish pink, but I find that people like a hot pink on their cake rather than the red pink of Tic Tac. But anyway, what I did, I mixed my, this is marshmallow fondant, and I mixed it with a little bit of Tylos powder. If you watch my videos, you know I put Tylos powder in almost all of my fondant that I use. The Tylos powder helps the fondant to dry hard. So these, um, these pieces are gonna hold its shape and they're gonna be able to stand on top of the cake and they're gonna dry hard like a rock. That way it's gonna hold its shape, it's not gonna droop down off of the cake. So a little bit goes a long way, just sprinkle a little bit on, on the fondant, knead it together and roll it out. Let it sit for about 10 to 20 minutes before you start to use it so the Tylos can start to work its magic and stiffen the fondant. Since these are going on top of the cake, I rolled this fondant out about a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. You wanna make sure that if you're putting it on top of the cake that you roll it out thick so you can get a skewer in the bottom. So make sure you roll out some fondant, have it sit, set it aside for at least 10 to 20 minutes. And usually I roll out the fondant before I start printing all of this out. All right, now I have the number 11. I may have to turn this towards me so I can see so my head won't get in the way. And I wanna make sure that this is pretty straight on the pattern and not on an angle because the pattern won't be straight up and down. So I do have to turn this towards me. I have a cutting board here. I have a piece of, uh, I have a paper towel that I wet. That way I can wipe my X-Acto knife on it as it starts to get dirty. I have an X-Acto knife with a sharp blade. And what I'm gonna do, I want to set this on top, make sure it's as straight as possible. And I kind of want the bottom to have, like bottom across here to have the little TikTok symbols. So you just kind of kind of look at it and see where you want to put it. <laughs> All right, and this is good. So what I wanna do, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and press, I'm gonna cut through the paper and through the edible image and just cut the number one out. And I'm gonna do that for both ones. You have to make sure that you hold this steady with your other hand so the paper doesn't slide and you, know, you don't want it to move once you start cutting it. So I'm pushing this all the way down through the paper, through the edible image, down into the cutting board. 
and I'm just tracing this black line and I'm gonna cut the whole thing out. And so that cut that out and I can lift this up and remove here. So now it is a little stuck in the corner. There we go. You don't want to tear it. You want to gently lift it out and cut down if you need to get it out. Okay. So there's a, one of them. And then I just want to do the same thing with the other one. gently removing it perfect now I have that 11 and now I want to put that on here so I'm going to do one pink and one blue one and in order to do that I have a paintbrush and a paper towel I'm going to flip these over I have a little piping gel I'm going to get some piping gel on the paintbrush and I'm going to paint the back make sure you paint all the way over the edges onto the paper towel and make sure that the number doesn't slide around so you have to hold it down with one hand and I'm painting off of the number onto the paper towel. So you want to make sure that you get all of the edges because if the edges are pulling up, then it's, it's not going to, it's not going to stick right. You know, you want the edges to be able to stick all the way down. All right, once that's done, you wanna make sure that your hands are completely dry when you handle these so you don't mess up the ink. I'm gonna pick up one of these numbers and just put it right in the middle. And starting at one end, let it gently fall and start to press it down so no air bubbles form behind it. There, and now you wanna make sure you press it all the way down on the edges. Do the same thing for the other one. So what I want to do now, I want to have my wet paper towel handy so I can keep wiping off my X-Acto knife. And I want to cut a border around here. Now, you want to make sure that you cut straight up and down. If you hold this on an angle, the back part of your piece is going to be thinner than the front and it's not going to be um, structurally sound. You want to hold the blade straight up and down. Also, you can't just put it down to the bottom and start cutting because it's gonna make the fondant look really ugly. So what I like to do first is make a shallow cut and then make the deep cut. So I'm gonna hold the blade straight up and down. I'm gonna to have to get close, my head may get in the way. I wanna cut an even border the whole way down and I'm going to saw up and down. Not <laughs> this dramatic, but I'm just showing you what I'm gonna be doing with the knife. So I'm starting, I want like a nice little border around it, holding the blade straight and I just want to cut a shallow cut. I'm not cutting all the way down to the bottom. And now that I have the shallow cut, I'm gonna cut all the way down. So putting the blade all the way down to the board, so it's touching the cutting board, and then using the line that I just cut as a guide and dragging the knife through, cutting the fondant. This way it's not gonna mess up the fondant. As I get to a corner, I start to pull the fondant away and then cut around. So you just have to, you just gotta be mindful. You can't just stick your knife in and just start cutting and it's gonna make everything look ugly. You have to be careful and you have to just take your time with it. I'm gonna have to get close. I hope this doesn't zoom in on my head. So as you're going around edges, you may have to stop halfway. As you get into corners here, you may just have to have your knife face up one way and then turn it and face it in the other. You know, like I'm just putting the knife down, I'm pulling the fondant away, we will fix. It's gonna make it look a little ugly, but we will fix it once we cut everything out. All right, now, whenever you cut anything out of fondant, like this, look how ugly it is. You can't just put it on a cake like this. It looks disgusting, so we gotta work with it. I have my favorite tool here, a Dresden tool. You can use um, like a, a paintbrush, the handle of a paintbrush, whatever you have that you can get into here. So what I like to do first is flip it over. You can see how disgusting this looks. 
So I'm gonna take my fingers along the edge and just smooth everything out. I have pieces like this sticking out. So I wanna do take the end of a paintbrush or a Dresden tool and I'm pushing this fondant and kind of smoothing it back down onto itself. So anywhere that you can see that it looks a little dirty, I call it, just pressing it back down and smoothing it out. Flip it over and do the same thing. I'm gonna smooth it out and just make sure it looks nice and pretty. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. And now this fondant still is relatively soft, so I don't wanna put skewers in here yet. So what I'm gonna do, just let this sit out for about, I don't know, four or five hours, and then flip it over and let it sit out for another four or five hours so both sides can start to dry and then we will stick skewers in the bottom. So just leave these out at room temperature, letting air hit it, don't wrap it up or anything, just keep it like on a cutting board and just let it sit out for a couple hours and then we will continue. All right, now these have been actually sitting out overnight. The fondant is still a little soft. You just wanna make sure that you get these skewers in here before it, the fondant hardens up. So I did flip them over so the opposite side could be exposed to the air. I have two eight inch bamboo skewers that I ran the tips under water. And now I'm just gonna push the skewers in the bottom. So if you've seen any of my other videos, I have the technique of twist and push, <laughs> okay? So you wanna, basically you're screwing the, the bamboo skewer into the piece. We're not just jamming it in there because it could mess it up. So you just wanna be careful with it. And you wanna make sure that you put the skewer directly in the middle. If you put it too high, it could poke out the top. If you put it too low, it could poke out the back. So you just have to get low with it and what I'm doing is I'm putting it directly in the center and then I'm twisting as I push. I'm twisting this as I'm pushing it up, which is gonna let it easily um, slide into the piece. If I jam it in there, I'm gonna mess up the number. So what I like to do, then turn it over and then twist and push again. So you can make sure you'll be able to feel it if it starts to push through, if it starts to like come up too high, then what you can do is start to use your finger and push it down as you're pushing it in. I hope this isn't confusing, but this is just how I do it. Um, I just keep flipping it over, making sure that the skewer is not popping out either side. And there, that looks pretty good. Just a little trick. I did get some of the ink on the back of this when I was working with it yesterday. So I have a little bit of vodka here on a paper towel. Just get a little bit of vodka on the back and you can run it over the ink stain and it will remove it. The vodka will evaporate. There will be no alcohol in the decorations here, so you don't have to worry about that. So these are all ready to go on the top of the cake. I'm just going to leave them sit out until I'm ready to put them on the cake. All right, now I wanna put these on top of the cake. So just a note here, if you find that if you put this down here and the skewer is way too long, you just have to get a pair of snips and snip off the bottom. Scissors really don't work, so you would just have to snip the bottom, but these are not too long. So what I like to do is get a little bit of piping gel on a paintbrush and paint the bottom of the number. This will help it to st stay into place. All right, I'm gonna have to turn this so I can get uh, get it center but I want to hold these and make sure they are center in the cake and then just push them down I 
and perfect. And there are your edible image number cake toppers. So here you go. Here is the adorable little edible image number cake topper. Um, I'm going to put this down. However, before I do, I have videos on how I make the curlies, how I make the silver glitter, how I make, you know, all this stuff. I will link videos below that you can see how I do the techniques that are on this cake because I know people will ask me. But for right now, just look at the little numbers on the top. Totes of dwarves. <laughs> so obviously you don't have to do just a TikTok theme, just a TikTok theme. This works for, you know, any picture that you want to find. You want to make sure that you measure the top of your cake. If I made those numbers bigger, it would have been off. It wouldn't look right. So always measure the top of your cake and print out everything that you need the size that you want it to be. And just a, just a disclaimer about using edible printers, edible image systems, you must dedicate one printer that has never been used for anything else for your edible images. You don't want to take an old printer that had toxic ink running through the printer head that's still in the printer head. If you use a printer that has regular ink running through it and try to just put in the cartridges, the edible ink cartridges, it's not going to be edible. Just think about it. That the ink, regular ink is toxic. If that is still going through the system, you print it out on an edible sheet and someone eats it, they're eating toxic toxic chemicals and you don't want to do that so you must invest in a complete system that you just dedicate the printer and everything is just dedicated to your edible icing sheets and again i will link icing images um, information below so i think that is it if you have any questions or comments leave them below and i will get back to you and you can follow me on social media I am on Instagram and Facebook and I have my website. I have two Instagram accounts right now. Um, you can follow both of them. I'm, I, my other one is starting to work, the Carolyn's Cakes, but it's still Cake Academy. I'm going to try to post stuff on there too. So two Instagram accounts and I need to stop rambling about Instagram, but anyway. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these videos next and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. It really helps out my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.